Hello. How are you? Uh, I wanted to show you guys how I blend eyeshadow because I uploaded a photo. I uploaded a photo? Who says upload? How old am I? I uploaded a photo to uh, Instagram. I'm not gonna be doing this look, but I'm gonna be doing something very similar. This look. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen it. Same look, different lighting. Um, and I received a few comments from people saying, how do you blend these looks? Because you, because some, uh, some people were like, I try to do these looks and I just can't blend them. And these are my favorite to do. Basically, it's either a one or a two eyeshadow look. And it's typically like two colors that are basically the same uh, or transition really nicely. For that one, I used an orange and like more of a warm yellow. Today, I'm going to be, because I got these really cute nails. So I'm gonna be using like a blue. So the number one thing is your eye primer. Using an eye primer I think is really important. I have used concealer in the past, but I use a very small amount of concealer and then I set it with a powder uh, and a very small amount of powder. So if you're doing that, like if you don't want to invest in an eye primer, if you just wanna use your concealer, make sure you're using very small amounts. It can work, but an eye primer is literally meant to hold the pigment, make it pop, not all of them but a lot of them are meant to like make the eyeshadow actually like stand out uh and it's also meant to like smooth out your eyes so the skin so that it's easier to blend my favorite eye primers are the anastasia beverly hills one where is it however they have received criticism for this because it's only one shade and it is bright as fuck so if you're very fair if you want your um eyeshadow to really stand out then It'll be great, <laughs> you know? And that's why I like it because it cancels out all of my discoloration on my eyelids. And um, yeah, it's like a nice smooth base. It does tend to crease up because I do have like just creases. I don't have like a nice smooth area on my uh, eyelid. Um, like a, who's a person I can use as a, an example? Butte Soup, if you know on Instagram, I'll insert a photo, her like, just her eye socket is so nice um it's like killian murphy beautiful um so i do tend to get like a little bit of just creasing like in this area right in my crease so before i blend i just kind of like pat that out and then i immediately go in and blend my other favorite is from elf this is i can't remember what this is called this is in the shade sheer i think they have different colors but it's just like a beauty it's a beautiful formula and it is sheer so it's i mean it's light like that but once you blend it out it's basically disappears you know so it doesn't really smell like anything. Um, but yeah, so it is like a light sheer and I, I, I wanna say they have different colors, but I could be wrong. Um, but this is one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. And especially if I'm doing like a very natural look, then this is what I'll use. Sometimes I'll just apply this on my eyelids just in general, just kind of like, you know, diffuse the actual look of my veins and shit. Those are my two favorites. I've also been kind of like experimenting with, is it Tarte? Yeah, I have, oh, here it is with the NARS One Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I'm still kind of like deciding on this one, but I think I like it. Anyway, those other two are the ones that I would suggest. Now, couple other things. If your eyelids are very dry, your the areas that are dry can tend to hold the pigment. It'll kind of get like, like say you have flaky skin, which is a problem that I've been having recently. The eyeshadow will get stuck in those areas and just kind of like, it gets caught in like the cracks of the dry skin. Gross, true, okay? Conversely, if your eyelids are too oily in those certain areas that contain more oil, the pigment is just gonna kind of get like caught up there. And those things can really like, affect the way that you're blending. So knowing your skin type, knowing your eyelids, uh, making sure that you're using something that isn't going to be too like wet if you have oily eyelids. I think the e.l.f. one is really good for oily eyelids and I think the Anastasia primer is good for like normal to dry if I had to choose, you know? But you can also like, if you have very dry eyelids, make sure that you're using an eye cream or maybe make sure you're, you know, prepping your eyelids just like you would prep your under eyes for concealer. So those are just some things that I wanted to like say right off the bat. Okay, so I'm gonna be using very bright colors. So I want to use my Anastasia primer. Now you don't have to use a ton of product. That's another thing that's really important. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my, you can't really see it. Camera, can you do my bidding? 
that much. I'm gonna use that between uh, both eyes and I like to get it really even. So I'm looking down into a mirror. You want your eyelids to be nice and flat. I like to start on the actual eyelid and then just kind of like blend out up to my eyebrows out here. And I'm using just kind of like pressing and patting a little bit of dragging motions. I like to place it in the inner part here, bring it out here up to my eyelids. You can see how light it is and how much it really, I mean, it really like removes the color from my eyelids. So it's perfect for very, very bright eyeshadow colors. I'm just taking a teeny little bit of that, like whatever's left over underneath my, um, onto my lower lash line, which isn't necessary, but if you feel like eyeshadow doesn't really like stick there, it's not a bad idea, but I wouldn't apply like a ton. I would just use whatever's left over. So I've applied my primer. However, for me, I tend to get a lot of darkness like right in here in the center of my like very inner corner and also in this area. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of powder in those areas, which is going to prevent pigment from sticking there. So when I'm blending, it's going to prevent pigment from like catching on to that eyeshadow primer and sticking in that area because I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna use, um, just because I used this today, I'm gonna use the Jaclyn Hill Eye Brightening Powder. And I'm just using uh, this Wayne Goss number 16 brush. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that powder, go over that eyeshadow primer in the areas where I don't want there to be like a ton of pigment. So in the inner area up here, basically just those areas that tend to get dark. And then I'm also going to take that on the outer corner and just kind of blend around and that will make it a lot easier to diffuse so it doesn't end up getting like caught in my uh, skincare. Skincare, skin products. <laughs> and if you're using very bright colors and you're worried about like fallout and stuff like that, obviously do your eyes first. Uh, what I would do in that situation is maintain all of the eyeshadow like a little bit closer to the eyes. And then once I have my skincare products down, skin, why do I keep saying skincare? Skin products down, I would take a big fluffy brush and blend around the edges. That way it's blended into my skin. You know what I mean? But you're doing your eyes first. Okay, so the next thing would be like various brushes is always good. So having just like different sized blending brushes is very helpful. Now I can link my favorites down below. I will do my best to find like good affordable ones. This one's Wayne Goss, it's expensive. This one's Morphe, cheap. This one is also Wayne Goss, it's expensive. Sigma has really good ones, but they tend to be a little bit more on the high end side, uh, but I will link them down below. ELF has really good ones, NYX has some good ones, Beach Cosmetics, ColourPop. So those are some really good affordable like sets. Maybe I'll find some sets, but just having various sizes is really going to help. For this look, for me, just these two, perfect. And in all honesty, if I just had like two this size, totally would work. Now the first color that I'm going to be, I'm gonna be using two different colors today, but for this kind of look, I really do enjoy using just like one eyeshadow. So for instance, I said that I had these new cute little nails. So I'm gonna be using the uh, BH Cosmetics Los Angeles palette because it has LAX and 90210, which are the colors that I wanna use. So I really like that. That's what I want to be like my hero color. But I think I'm gonna use um, 90210 as my like transition shade. Uh, and the first shade that I go in with. So if I'm comparing it to the look that I posted on Instagram, this would be the yellow and this would be the orange. This is a transition shade, right? So it's just going to be like the initial shade that I go in with. So I'm using my big fluffy brush, the Wayne Goss number 16, dipping into that shadow, which is kind of like a pinky purple kind of color. Tapping off my brush, so I'm not going in with too much. And like I said, I gotta like, Make sure this is all blended out. And I'm going to start just above my crease. And this is basically just going to be very lightly diffused so that I have some kind of a base to blend the blue into. And obviously once we start blending the blue onto the lid and up into the crease, it's gonna create like a really pretty purple color. Why are you not, yeah. <laughs> so when I'm doing this, I'm using a very light hand I'm holding my brush back pretty far and I'm just doing little circular motions. You can do like a little wind washer, wind, sh wind, wa wind, what? Windshield wiper motions, like back and forth if you wanna like define the crease a little bit more. And then as you go up, you 
know, little round motions. I don't know why I always do this. The way you hold your brush is really going to help. So if you have a hard time blending, try holding your brush a little bit more like this so that the definition is a little bit more in the crease. And it kind of like helps to diffuse that color because you have the majority of the color on the end, but not up here, you know what I mean? But I no, I suck at doing that for some reason, I don't know why. So you're focusing the pigment just above the crease and then slowly diffusing up and out and you can obviously smoke it out as much as you want. Now I'm going to grab my other blending brush, which was the Morphe M433 brush, very similar to a MAC 217. For reference, it gets a little fatter as you turn it. So I'm gonna use the flatter side and I'm going to dip into LAX. Now, I'm not gonna focus this on the tip. I'm just going to dip my brush into it like this, picking up pigment, always tapping off so you're not going in with too much. And then I'm going to pack this all over the lid. So I'm starting at like the lash line basically. And I want to build up as much pigment as I can there and then just kind of like slowly diffuse it up into that purpley pink color. Now you could use like a, a flatter brush to pack this on, but the nice thing about using like a fluffy brush is you're already using a brush that you're going to be blending with. So make sure that you're looking down so that you can keep your eyelids as flat as possible. So it's a lot better to tap off your brush and make sure you're not going in with too much and slowly build up the pigment than, you know, picking up a bunch of pigment going on and like getting a bunch of fallout or applying too much pigment or whatever. So now I'm gonna use that same brush. I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I always keep a paper towel. Uh, you know what, actually Sigma just recently like launched this thing. It's called the Sigma Switch and it's so that you can like switch colors with your brushes and it works so well, but I keep forgetting that I have it. So let's do that. So I just like rub your brush on the little rubber thingies and it kind of like cleans your brush a little bit, you know, so you can switch colors. I don't know, <laughs> I like it. I think it's really helpful. Anyway, so I'm gonna pick up more of LAX, but I'm gonna focus it on the very tip of the brush. Once again, tapping off right in the crease in between those two colors. I'm gonna use those same, uh, what did I call them? Circular, not hard, circular motions to buff the blue into the pink. Hold on, my boyfriend's calling me. What was I saying? Anyway, so now I'm just slowly diffusing into that pink. And basically as I get up into that pink, I'm holding my brush back even further and I'm like hardly touching my skin. It also really helps to be able to like step back and look, you know, if you're too close, sometimes you can't really tell. And if I didn't have that pink there, if it was just the blue, this is exactly how I would be doing it, the exact same way. I would start off with the blue in my crease, really lightly build that up, pack it onto the lid and then blend up. Isn't that pretty? Love. And then I actually really like the way this looks, the way it is, but if you felt like you wanted more of the pink to come through, I would wipe off this brush, pick up a little bit of pink and just kind of like, you know, build that up a little bit more. But I kind of like how diffused it looks. It's the same thing for the lower lash line, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna, actually gonna start off with, um, wait, this one? What looks better with the nails though? I feel like that looks better with the nails. Um, I'm just gonna go into my waterline really quickly with this uh, ColourPop BFF Cream Gel Liner in the shade Zulu. All right, and then f as far as the lower lash line goes, I love like a brush like this guy, which is the Morphe M507, because it's just like tiny detail pointed the blender. Um, I love this kind of thing, pencil smudgy brush. This one's from BH Cosmetics. Uh, anything that's just like small and detailed. This is a, a crease brush, a detail crease brush from e.l.f. I'll link a bunch of them down below, but just basically like this kind of size, you know? I love to smoke out my lower lash lines, so. I typically start off with a more tightly packed brush. Ooh, this one's pretty good too. Same, I think a uh, BH. So yeah, I'm gonna grab, um, what was it? LAX on that brush and run that all underneath my lower lash line. Now you can do it like in any order really, you know? I'm a less I'm less picky with my uh, lower lash line. 
Blend that down a bit. Like I said, I like to smoke it. So it's a recent phenomenon that um, I've had a hard, well, over the probably the past like year or so, I've had a harder time with pigment staying on my lower lash line, which is why um, I started, I brought like a little bit of my eye primer down there, which should help actually keep it. All right, now I'm gonna use a slightly fluffier brush. So I'm gonna grab the e.l.f. Detail Crease Brush. Let me just make sure there's nothing on here. <laughs> and I'm gonna grab 90210. And then I'm going to, you wanna make sure you're looking up for this so that it's nice and, where can I put my mirror so that there isn't a shadow on my face? <laughs> um, and just buff underneath that. So I guess we're kind of doing this in reverse. It doesn't really matter though. You can go in with the pink first. I don't know, whatever. Once again, preference. Um, all right guys, I just applied a few coats of mascara. I did one coat of Wayne Goss, which I've been wearing literally since I tried it. And then I popped a little bit of my um, Buxom on top just because I haven't tried that yet and I wanted to. So this is the finished look. Kind of fabulous. You know what I mean? This is like, my go-to look right now is just like my natural lashes, two shadows, that's it. Maybe one shadow, just like sing, basically like single color all over the eyes, like a smoky eye. Mm. Natural looking lips, juicy skin. Uh, yeah, that's it. Hope that it helped in some way. Um, I would love to hear what your favorite eye primers are. Yeah, if there are any that, I know I get so, so many people have told me about the one by P. Louise, I think. Still haven't gotten it. Gotta do that like right after this. But also people who have deep skin, like medium and deep skin, what are the best eye primers that have um, like shades for you or are sheer enough for you, if that even exists. I guess that's it guys. Thanks for watching, hope it helped and bye, see you next time. I'm gonna drink my terrible tea that I forgot about. Oh, oh, no, that's bad.